Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot on the docket today. I think we're going to be able to make it to early mid-game with our beautiful dupe-only power colony. There was a lot of recommendations on why I chose horizontal ranches versus vertical, which is a great question. And in a standard base, because they fit so well, I normally go with the horizontal ranches. As luck would have it, someone with a keen eye pointed out, I boogered this one up. I do this one all the time. We built this room to be 96 tiles large, and now it's only 90 because we built the six farm tiles. So I figured since we're going to be extending this anyways, might as well move it and give the people what they want, the vertical Dreco ranches. And it actually makes more sense to use the vertical Dreco ranches in this playthrough as well because we'll only be powering one auto sweeper instead of three. I've got a good design I want to try out. We'll be getting to that soon. I'd also like to start getting infinite food storage going. I like to have my infinite food storage set up right before the mid game or right as the mid game starts because you really want to make sure your food supply is stapled and done with so it's something you don't have to worry about. And in the background, I added a desalinator because when we scan around here, every once in a while we'll see some brine ice, such as right here. And eventually this brine ice is going to melt, drop into our pool, and then break our whole little system. And I mentioned last time that I didn't want to pay the power cost on the desalinator. And I remembered, wait a minute, I won't actually be paying the power cost on the desalinator unless it gets any salt or brine water. Just like the, with the water sieve. If the water sieve comes across clean water, it doesn't sieve it, and we don't pay the power cost. Our plumbing setup is pretty simple. We just move the liquid pipes instead of coming down this way straight down through and over. And as you can see from this desalinator, it has an uptime of 0% this cycle and last. In fact, its last five cycles has seen 0% activity, which means we're not paying the power cost. And that can be confirmed again by this conductive wire. You can see the current load does not include the desalinator. The desalinator is a chunky boy and requires 480 watts. We're powering it by the transformer on the left side, powering the rest of our oxygen setup and another available 315 watts to exploit before we hit the 2000 max on the conductive wire. I'm happy with this setup, and I don't think we have to revisit it again until we're at 30 dupes. Because after 30 dupes, we're gonna be running low on oxygen. If it was to run flat out, your electrolyzers can only support a little over 30 duplicates, and that's assuming none of them are mouth breathers or anything like that. Each electrolyzer produces 888 grams of oxygen per second, and your average dupe, like Lyra here, consumes 100 grams of oxygen per second. So we'll look at expanding this and adding another oxygen setup when we have around 30 to 32 dupes. That's not 100% true either because our cool slush guys are here. When you do all the math, it produces a little over one kilo per second of water. And one of these requires four kilos per second to run at maximum efficiency. Luckily for us, we have another cool slot slush geyser down here, and I'm hoping there's another geyser in here. So we're extending our base a little bit for a couple of reasons. First, we needed the room to put the Dreco ranches, and I really don't want to have to deal with going outside the base in Atmo suits to go deal with our... Please hold. Who is suffocating? Catalina. Oh, Catalina. So let's fix this real quick. Hold here, hold there. Can we make those an absolute huge priority? All right, now I can continue after Catalina's hashtag first world problems of not being able to breathe. We wanted to extend the base a little bit because I wanted to put the Dreco ranches in here. I don't want them to eventually have to change over into Atmo suits just to tend to the Dreco ranches. We also need to find the space for material science lab and still have room for plenty of wheels in the future. So we're gonna extend it over here, which means I think we need to move our morb. We've also collected a nice little sage hatch. And because this is a giant dumpster fire here, we're gonna move our beautiful venting gas pump down here. Make sure we wire it all up. And now it'll be responsible for venting all the carbon dioxide and the nastiness that is accumulated down here. All right, Liam and Ari are finishing up the walls to our beautiful Dreco ranches. Now it's time to throw a ton of hydrogen in here and get the rest of this mess sweeped up. Lucky for us, we still have the beautiful canister filler up top 
So we're just going to throw a canister emptier like right about here. And we're using airflow tiles, so they will share the hydrogen up here. I don't know about you, but this this whole thing makes me cringe. I need nice four tile high rooms. Like this is this is too much for me. We'll make do. We'll make do. Maybe we'll figure out something creative to do with the two tile gap. Might make me feel a little better. Stinky, you haven't leveled up yet? Oh, Stinky, you've been ready, buddy. Go get your hat. While we're loading these ranches with hydrogen, I figured we can start with one of the ranches here. Now, right now, this room has 99 tiles. Do not fear. We're going to eat up three of those tiles with farm tiles, which will make this a perfect 96. Now, thing we have to make sure is that the three mealwoods are going to be enough to feed the eight Drekos. I'm pretty sure I've gone as low as three. If you remember, our Dreco boys have a lot of calories. More importantly, they can hold a lot of calories. Yeah, they take 2,000 calories per cycle is what they can consume. They can hold over 9,000 calories, so they can go quite a few days without eating, which I'm hoping is enough for these mealwoods to be able to grow. Let's get them in near now so we can at least test this theory. Otherwise, we're going to have to do some finagling. I think we have found our decorating doctor. Harold doesn't have the strongest skills in creativity and medicine, but at least they have the interest in it. They're an animal lover. Yep, it's fine. They're biohazardous, which is typically not something that you want in your doctor, but having the decorator doctor with an added bonus of some tidying, this works out well. Welcome, Harold. All right, we have the ranches switched over and chock full with some beautiful hydrogen. It's even a little higher than I was expecting but this will work out perfectly. We only need these tiles here to be oxygen, first of all, so our dupes can breathe and don't get irritated by the hydrogen in here. But second of all, so the mealwood can grow. Now let's set up the automation. One of the great things about the nine tile wide situation is an auto sweeper can see all the way over. So you put one auto sweeper in here and you'll be able to sweep up all the eggs and anything else that you'd want in here now for the eggs themselves we're going to be dumping those off into a starvation farming shearing station i know it's a mouthful these auto sweepers will grab all the eggs dump them into these conveyor loaders and then drop them off right here this is going to give us a nice supply of both meat and the plastic and reed fiber that the drecos produce and perfect our first draco eggs are being dropped into our shearing station this will give us that beautiful barbecue and some extra reed fiber. As luck would have it, I think we found another geyser in here, which is good because we're going to set up our sort of temporary steel creating facility. And we needed these wheeze wards for our future materials science station. So we're going to go ahead and break into here, get some steel production going and see what's behind magical door number one. We're starting to get the starvation warnings on some of our dupes. Whenever you start seeing that and you're like, wait a minute, there's a lot of food. I don't understand. Go under the schedule, add them an extra set of downtime. That way they have plenty of time to get back to the base and be able to eat. Bad news, by the looks of it, this is gonna be a cool steam vent, which is exactly what you don't want inside your tundra biome. Oh, even worse. It's a chlorine gas vent. Just what everybody wants. Because there's no water source down in that tundra biome, we're going to head down to this one. A little bit of cool polluted water ready for us. Question is, where do we want to break in? And I think this is just what we want right here. Since we know that we're eventually going to get into grub fruit, I think it's time to start looking for some dedicated farmers. Otto here looks like he fits the bill perfectly. He's got suit wearing and farming. Iron gut, caregiving, um, and his only negative is sleeping loud. Well, Otto, we've already got the room for you. Right next to our girl, Lyra. You two can snore the night away. So here's the colony's first sort of industrial area. Set in a beautiful tundra. Nice and chilly, just the way we like it. We got a liquid pump in here feeding this metal refinery. We got a power transformer that's taking power from the main spine from all the way over here. And one of my favorite features is the fact that the drainage comes all the way over here. It'll melt all the snow and ice before it even gets a chance to touch this polluted water. Let's start by making a little bit of iron. 50 ought to be good for now. 
And the idea is that eventually all this warm polluted water will melt the snow and ice and feed right back into this polluted water pool here. All the meanwhile really chilling back down. So we'll actually be able to run this metal refinery for quite some time. Now there's a ton of beautiful sleet wheat here. Just in these three stacks, we're looking at almost 150 sleet wheats. So we're gonna keep them safe by putting them in some carbon dioxide and deep freezing them. This area here is plenty cold enough and should stay plenty cold enough for quite some time. So we'll just throw them in our old ration box right here. I think we're gonna add another rancher to the mix while we're at it. Right now we're only doing the Direcos, but we're eventually gonna have to add some Sweetles for that sugar creation. Welcome to the team, Mima. Sweetles here, they eat the sulfur and they excrete sucrose. So it's one way that we can take a liquid sulfur geyser and turn it into an infinite amount of sucrose, which is also important in order to make grub fruit preserve because it requires grub fruit and sucrose. I think we're ready for our first piece of steel. Very exciting. We got 355 kilos of lime. We'll be able to get more lime once those Dracos really start producing. We're limited to about three tons of steel with the amount of lime that we have. Lucky for us though, I believe we started in an area that actually has some fossil laying around. We'll start with 10 steel and see where it takes us. Yes, over here on Takarini, here's the beautiful fossil here. Plenty of it. We'll be able to have plenty of lime. There's also some beautiful diamond and lead. Yeah, we're gonna get over there soon. But for now, the name of the game is gonna be research. We've been kind of stagnant We've completed all the level 1 and level 2 research in the entire tree. Unless I proved myself a liar. Nope, we actually did finish it out. Now we've got to get this sort of next stage. And as you may know, it requires material science research. And for the start of it, it's not that much. You can see bioengineering only takes 20 materials science research. But you come over here to the later part of the game... And it starts to get big time, 250 here, 400 here. So we're going to need a somewhat steady material science research station. This is my initial design. The problem here is though, we only have three wart seeds. That's not going to be enough. We'll throw them in here so we can see the initial design, but it's time to go grab some more. There's one there. There's one there. Found another one here in the cheap seats way over here. Looks like we're breaking into you. Oh, there's another one in the corner here too. All right, so we have six wart seeds. I would still rather have the seven. So we're gonna keep looking. One area that we have not explored is this top crust. And instead of digging all the way through it, which man, that is some beautiful cold stuff there. We can just have our dupe run over here. Let's take old Frankie for instance, click the move to button, come all the way over here. And here comes Frankie in the vacuum of space. He's going to explore this little top crust for us. Don't know, buddy. You're not done yet. We need you to come over here. Thank you. Just want to make sure there's no other tundra biomes. It does not look like there is. Let's grab another dupe. Hello, Stinky. Let's go to the vacuum of space. We want you to go over... Ah, oh, this is a three-tile gap. So we can't explore as far out here without making some changes. So why don't we make those changes right here? Thank you, Gossman. And since you're up here, why don't you come walk over here? You have enough oxygen, I promise. If you move faster, you won't run out of air. No, buddy, you don't need to breathe yet. We're going back over here. Come on. Beautiful. Now we've explored this side of the crust. And I'm sure Gossman's going to get back in time. Almost. And thanks to the dupes who sacrificed just a little bit of their air supply, we've now explored the entire top crust. At last, there are no more Weiss warts on this planetoid. So we're going to have to go with six. Not too shabby, but at least let me show you some of these features. Weiss warts require phosphorite. Lucky for us, we just so happen to have a beautiful supply of phosphorite. Thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Dreco. Now the Weiss wart takes 4,000 grams per cycle, which is four kilos per cycle. And our beautiful Drecos produce nine kilos per cycle. So one Dreco properly being fed can actually support two Weiss warts. So we're doing fine on phosphorite. But there's a lot of radiation in here. And I don't feel like really dealing with the radiation poisoning, so we've got a conveyor chute. And our beautiful conveyor loader right over here, and here, 
are collecting all the phosphorite and sending it right here. And this auto sweeper will be able to feed these wheeze warts forever and we don't have to worry about dupes coming in here to do it manually. But now it's time for the name of the game and it's radiation. Now this is the best radiated tile that we have available to us at 160 rads per cycle. Not shabby. We're gonna take one of these beautiful rad bolt generators, stick it right here. Now, if you had a lot of power, let's say you were already tapped into geothermal power, you could definitely put more rad bolt generators, say here and here. But remember, these rad bolt generators take 480 watts a piece. And based on our power structure, we want to kind of limit how much power we're using. Now that we have our rad bolt generator, let's get one of these high penangled reflectors here. And then we can throw down the beautiful materials study station and based on that angle that we've got it coming in it'll go right here out of the way of dupes so they will not get injured in case of a stray rad bolt now it's time to figure out some math the materials study terminal only holds a certain amount of rad bolts and you want to make sure it's efficient as possible so what we can do is we can set this rad bolt generator to fire off every so often and only fire X amount of rad bolts. Remembering, of course, that every tile a rad bolt flies, it loses one rad bolt. I believe this is seven tiles across. Now, you can't exactly just add them up because it's only when it travels. So I think this is, for instance, one here, two here, three here. So we're going to play with it a minute and see if we're producing excess rad bolts. Let me fast forward this for a second. Our first test, we have it sending off 107 rad bolts. There they go. We're down to 99 rad bolts right now. And it looks like it was 97 rad bolts that made it into the machine. And you can see it's just about full. So we need to send three more rad bolts per shot. So let's increase that to 110. I was going to put some automation on it using a fancy timer and only sending them, say, once every two cycles or something. I don't think we need to do that because it's only gathering 160 rad volts per cycle anyways. So as long as a duplicate comes by and consumes 100 rad volts in a cycle, we'll never get the excess rad volts before this thing is empty. I'm going to tinker with it for a little bit and see if that works. We just fired another shot. You can see it was the perfect amount. We're at 100 rad volts. But then I realized... There's going to be a time that when we're completely done doing research, we want to turn this thing off. So we're going to go ahead and add a standard switch and just hook that up like that. And that way we can turn off the rad bolts whenever we're done with our materials research. So you may be wondering how we're doing on power, considering we've added a metal refinery and a rad bolt generator. We're doing decent. We are now starting to run on this second level. But all in all, I haven't really seen our battery box go below 50% power. We had a melted tile here. We need to go ahead and fix that. Oh my goodness. You sneaky little seed you. Come to Papa. And our collection is now complete. We have seven beautiful Reese wards doing their thing. And our center tile here is up to 176 rads per cycle. Beautiful. Since we're already producing so much radiation here and doing just fine, we're still collecting 145 rad bolts per cycle, and that's more than we can consume right now. I took these two wheeze warts because our poor Drecker ranches were having a problem maintaining their temperatures. I tried putting a double insulated tile here, but it's still a bit warm in here. Remember, Drecos and glossy Drecos produce heat. For instance, this Draco's body temperature is 35, and this glossy Draco's body temperature is at 32, which are both outside the acceptable range for mealwood that has a maximum temperature of 30. So these two wheeze warts will keep it right as rain, and we won't have to worry about that anymore. So in this episode, we got our beautiful Draco ranches completed and made vertical by popular demand. We also have our starvation farming shearing station here with our incubators everything is co-located and automated we got some basic steel production going and that's because in the next episode we're going to be tackling food storage now in order to do that we're going to need a cooling system to be able to get our food down to minus 18 to deep freeze it which is going to require a aqua tuner and a steam turbine 
We're going to be heading over to Takarini to grab that beautiful liquid sulfur geyser and anything else we want need. Unfortunately, it means two of our dupes are going to have to live here permanently because they too will have to run on wheels. And finally, we got our materials research going. This is going to help us close the gap before we need to get to orbital research. Some of the great things that this materials research is going to give us, the beautiful steam turbine, hence the reason we had to set up our Wieswort farm and generating that radiation before we got infinite food storage going because we need the renewable energy to get the steam turbine. It also gives us our first step into rocketry. That's going to be fun. I hope you had fun watching this episode and are looking forward to the next one as much as I am. Talk to you soon.